Today on Good Morning Maine, one man is in custody following an alleged shooting in Tremont. Plus, people gather in Bangor to protest the violence in the Middle East. And a look at some of the beautiful works of art during this weekend's Arttober celebration. Good morning and welcome to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith. And I'm Craig Colson. Thank you for joining us on this Monday morning. We'll have those stories coming up along with all the day's news. But first, to check out that forecast, what a rainy, kind of messy weekend. It I was know. Still not bad. It looks like people still had a good time going to various events all throughout the Thankfully, area. Thankfully, some were indoors. And some of us just stayed inside and watched movies, which yeah. was, was kind of nice, too. Yeah. Uh, good news is things will be brightening up. We should see some more sunshine as the week rolls along. Yeah especially tomorrow. Yeah. Here's Devin Biggs with that forecast. Craig and Emma, happy Monday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home in Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices. With locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. We're going to get into things this morning. A small craft advisory is posted until 11 a.m. this morning. Along the coast, because some active winds have caused some active surf along the coast. We're going to work on getting this to back off, though, as the gusty winds will gradually start to back off over time. As for the fog, we have a few spots seeing some fog. This morning, near parts of the Waterville and Augusta area, maybe near parts of Bangor as well. So some areas of dense fog cannot be ruled out this morning. Nothing too extreme to get too worried about. Otherwise, though, the rain started to taper off. The clouds will start to break up gradually, too. We'll get some sunshine rolling for a little while during this afternoon period. Then later on tonight, a mostly clear sky will be the common idea. Last few hours, though, here's that area of low pressure right here that's moving away from us now. So that's some good news to report. We'll calm down this week, but we may have to watch for a small chance for a few showers coming up in a few spots, especially especially in the northern parts of the state. So future cast for today, we'll see less clouds later on, especially later on tonight with a mostly clear sky, frost and freeze conditions expected later on tonight, especially in the parts of tomorrow morning. As for the winds, so roughly out of the north at around 5 to 10 miles per hour, some gusts up to 20 miles per hour are possible today for the winds start to back off later on tonight, but increasing for the daytime tomorrow. Hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period, a mixture of clouds and sunshine, temperatures in the 50s. Your full five-day forecast is coming Coming up, Craig and Emma. Well, there are still few details about an alleged shooting in Tremont. State police were called to a home on Cross End Road early Sunday morning. A man told authorities his roommate was firing a gun inside the home and he escaped to a nearby store to call for help. The man says the suspect fired shots into the ceiling, window and at his vehicle. No one was injured and the suspect was eventually arrested. We expect to learn more information about that situation later on today. A Clinton man is accused of sexually assaulting a child under the age of 12. 37 year old Christopher Connors was arrested Friday at his home in Clinton following what police are calling an extensive months long investigation. Connors has been charged with gross sexual assault of a minor, a class A felony charge. According to the Clinton Police Department, Connors initially refused to answer the door, but was taken into custody without incident. Connors is being held at the Kennebec County Jail with a bail of $100,000. Police from several departments swarmed to Holden Mobile Home Park on Saturday for the arrest of a Herman man. Here's a closer look at that situation. The Holden Police Department executed an arrest warrant for domestic violence assault Saturday. 36-year-old Whitney Bryant of Herman was arrested at a residence on Lloyd Lane in Holden's Cedar Haven Mobile Home Park. Bryant reportedly refused to exit the residence at first, but was taken into custody without incident. He is now facing several charges. He's been staying here at this residence in violation of a protection from abuse order, and we have arrested him already previously for violating that order. The charges right now are uh, domestic violence assault, which in this case is a felony, um, violation of a protection order, violation of conditional release, and obstructing the report of a crime. Holden police were assisted by the Maine State Police Tactical Team, the Brewer Police Department, and the Penobscot County Sheriff's Office. Officials say the heavy police presence was to ensure the safety of the community. There was some concerns of some violence, especially given the prior domestic violence situation, and uh, we just wanted to be safe and keep everybody safe and we're a small department so we wanted to make sure that we had enough resources. Bryant was taken to the Penobscot County Jail. In Holden, David Ledford, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. In other news now, a Bucksport man was arrested on Friday in East Millinocket after allegedly leading police on a short car chase that turned into a fight.
According to East Millinocket Police, shortly before noon on Friday, a car was observed driving recklessly on Poplar Street in Millinocket. The operator of the vehicle did not pull over after lights were flashed and continued to evade officers on residential streets. At one point, doing a U-turn and driving directly at officers. The car eventually came to a stop in the area of the sports field near Granite Street School. During the arrest, 27-year-old Devin O'Brien and the officer got into a physical altercation. The officer sustained multiple injuries and a nearby resident came out of their home to help subdue O'Brien, who had gained control of the officer's taser and was attempting to grab the officer's firearm, according to police. With the help of the resident, O'Brien was taken into custody. It was found that he had a blood alcohol of almost two times the legal limit. The officer was treated at the hospital for injuries sustained in the fight. O'Brien was transported to Penobscot County Jail and has been charged with eluding, refusing to submit to arrest, assault on an officer, driving to endanger, operating after suspension with three or more priors, operating under the influence, and other charges. Well, meanwhile, two people were taken to the emergency room after a rollover crash near Orono. Officials responded to a single vehicle accident on I-95 just after 3 p.m. yesterday afternoon. It was messy at the time. Those who responded to the scene are asking drivers to pay attention to the weather conditions when they're out on the roadway and to slow down. It's a good reminder uh, with all the rain on the roadway, just be careful, slow down. Uh, you know, DOT has the signs up saying that there's a potential for hydroplaning. So just be careful, uh, drive with caution and slow down. Well, both occupants made it out of the vehicle and reportedly received just minor injuries. The cause of the crash is under investigation. Another rollover crash Saturday in Portland left a Massachusetts man injured. Around 2.30 p.m., police say a single vehicle rolled over close to mile marker 4 on I-295 northbound in Portland. Police say the driver lost control of his vehicle, struck a guardrail, and crossed over two lanes of traffic before rolling over. An investigation indicated he was going too fast for the road conditions with partially bald tires. The driver was transported to Maine Medical Center with minor injuries. While troopers were on scene, a woman reportedly stopped in the median to take pictures. Police want to remind drivers that stopping to get out on the interstate is both dangerous and illegal. Well, a new road safety law is expanding to help drivers who are pulled over on the side of the road. Under current law, Maine drivers are required to slow down and move over when they see first responders, emergency vehicles, or tow trucks on the side of the road. However, the law is now being expanded to include any disabled vehicle with hazard lights on. During National Move Over Day on Saturday, police officials and AAA of Northern New England came together to raise awareness for road safety ahead of the law going into effect. This is a public issue that all of us need to work on. It's, there are too many deaths on the highways, too many people killed or injured, and they're preventable. We have had troopers that have been hit while conducting traffic stops on the side of the road. Uh, I've come close many times where vehicles have almost hit me when they've been driving by. We're just asking the motorist to pay attention and be aware of that and be considerate of that. And with the new law that goes into effect, to give that same to consideration to any vehicle that's pulled over. In addition to the new rule, technology like Hass Alert is being used in some emergency vehicles to help with the issue. With that system, drivers can receive real-time digital alerts when an emergency vehicle is nearby so they can slow down and move over. The updated move over law will go into effect on Wednesday. As Israel continues to suffer attacks from Hamas, dozens of Mainers gathered in Bangor to protest the violence between Israel and Palestine. Our Grace Blanchard has the details. A grassroots coalition of Mainers from all across the state gathered at Pierce Memorial Park in Bangor for a Save Gaza rally. Uh, the second that we've done since the recent uh, events that have taken place, um, and it's uh, important that we keep continuing to show up and demand peace in Palestine. Justice. Organizer Brendan Davison says the violence overseas has resulted in what he described as a humanitarian crisis for the people of Palestine. These people are starving, they are suffering under the Israeli bombs, and it, this does not end soon. More people will die, and this death toll is only going to climb even higher. My mom is from the Middle East. Uh, she's a third-generation Palestinian. And um, in the same day, 
uh, she, uh, she lost 17 of her family members. Several main political leaders have spoken in support of Israel's efforts to defend themselves from the attacks by Hamas. This is a terrorist group and we must do all that we can to support Israel in its quest to eliminate Hamas. Many protesters emphasize that they are not rallying in support of Hamas. We all deserve to have a place where we do not have to live in fear of oppression or being killed just for who we are. That extends to both you know, Jews and Muslims, Palestinians, Christians, everyone. That extends to everyone. In Bangor, Grace Blanchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Unfortunately, it's a long way from over, and as we'll hear a little later on, it's it's really just beginning. They're still planning their, their ground attack, and long way to go. Yeah, yep. The time now is 8-11. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, we'll check out a new fire training facility in Bucksport, a state-of-the-art facility that will train students to fight fires aboard ships. But first, another check of that local weather forecast. Today, we can expect brightening skies. It will be partly cloudy with highs near 53 degrees, mostly cloudy overnight with lows dropping down to around freezing. Tomorrow, mostly sunny with highs near 57. Comfy, cozy, relaxing, not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find rockers, recliners, sofas, and easy chairs. Quality furniture, affordable prices, not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. To keep the doors open as long as we have, the customers always come first. And that's why we're against question three. Question three costs $13.5 billion. That's billion with a B, which could mean higher taxes for all Mainers. It turns our power grid over to the politicians, the same politicians that take money from the oil and gas companies. They put themselves first, not us. Question three is a risk Mainers cannot afford. Jerry's Used Cars has been a family-owned business for more than 30 years, currently in Corinna and Vizi. However, we have changed a little as we are no longer just a buy-here-pay-here -here dealership. We now have access to outside financing and also carry utility trailers. We would be happy to assist you with your next vehicle purchase. And don't forget, here at Jerry's Used Cars, we offer an extended warranty. So give us a call at either our Corinna or Vizi location. Durable, sturdy, stylish, not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find solid wood, built to last, made in main dressers, bureaus, and nightstands. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. It was quiet for too long. Now, college football is back. How about this? And so is the noise. Wow. Bring on the rivalries. Watch out! Hold down the fort. What a game. Feel what you've been missing. Listen to this drum. College football on Fox. Touchdown. Unbelievable. Man overboard incidents are one of the leading causes of death among the 1st Coast Guard District commercial fishing fleet. The U.S. Coast Guard sector northern New England is commencing their annual Operation Safe 8, conducting commercial fishing vessel safety boardings with an emphasis on safety gear and training. Recent safety data from the U.S. Coast Guard shows that over the last 10 years, there have been 41 man overboard reports, 23 of those resulting in deaths of commercial fishermen, just in New England alone. Coast Guard members will be conducting these boardings on fishermen and commercial boats to make sure they're in compliance with several regulations. Equipped with an emergency position indicating radio beacon, proper vessel stability, and more. Well, Maine Maritime Academy has a hot new training facility that they've dubbed the Fire Chief. Devin Dagnall takes us there. This is, this is state-of-the-art technology. So it's made for a combination of shoreside and shipboard firefighting. One of the most unique things in the state of Maine, I think. The Fire Chief is a four-story training facility located in Bucksport, designed to prepare Maine Maritime Academy students for any firefighting situation, whether on land or sea. Well, the simulations are made to simulate a regular shipboard fire. As the new vessels come out, newer technology, some of our props are made to emulate that. There's three different props. There's an engine room simulator prop, a sofa prop, 
and the third one is a galley fire or a kitchen fire prop. The fire chief's fires are all controlled and fueled by propane, which makes it far less toxic than training methods of the past. These days, you know, we don't have houses we can burn anymore, so having facilities like this for a controlled environment to, to teach the new generation coming up gives them a good controlled way to start learning. Although the intention of the facility was to be used by MMA students, Chief Operating Officer Craig Johnson says the Academy is happy to welcome any fire departments or businesses throughout all of New England to train with their fire chief. So it's, a, it's a great chance for the state of Maine to partner with Maine Maritime Academy and the local fire departments. In Bucksport, Devin Dagnall, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Fall is in full swing in Maine, and as multicolored leaves hit the streets, artists hit the sidewalks to showcase a variety of creations. Our Callie Warren takes us downtown for a look at some of their work. Local artists and vendors gathered in downtown Bangor Saturday for the Art Ober Sidewalk Art Festival. Hosted by the nonprofit Downtown Bangor Partnership, the event provided a space for the public to check out unique art from local crafters. No, it's been great. I've been here since 6 a.m. helping unload all the, the cars and seeing all the beautiful things that people have created here. And it's, it just brings the community together. The event featured live local music and food trucks, as well as a college art tent presented by the University of Maine's McGillicuddy Humanities Center. I'm glad that I'm allowed to show my art at these events and be accepted into them as well because going to classes and having all these assignments and then also doing your own work on the side like these are all very personal and it gives you an opportunity to like build your portfolio and then build a market with a wide variety of vendors some say the festival has something for everyone it's been really great a lot of positive people everybody seems to like the art i kind of deal with strange and abnormal things so i do a lot of reptile art i make my beaded spiders and everything i try and bring beauty to the things that people find a little scary and weird or odd in the world in bangor callie warren abc7 and fox 22 news Cool. Did you see that last vendor? Um, her name was Emma, and it was called Emma's Abnormalities. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I should link up with her. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty abnormal. Yeah. yeah. You are not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The time now is 8:17. After the break, a local veteran from Ornville is honoring the lives lost during the Beirut bombing of 1983 with a memorial and a wooded trail system. We'll give you a look at his work as Good Morning Maine continues. Maine has the best shipbuilders in the world. But to compete, we need reliable and affordable energy. That's why we're voting no. No on question three. It will cost Mainers billions and increase costs for families and businesses like Bath Ironworks. Like Bath Ironworks. And the politicians, they're not even required to have an operations plan when they take over. We'd never do our job without a plan. Please vote no on question three. It's a bad idea for Maine. Winter is coming. Make sure your roof is at peak performance with Peak Performance Roofing. With over 20 years of experience in the roofing industry, our professionals provide quality craftsmanship and expertise that you can rely on. We are fully insured and work closely with your insurance company to make the process seamless for you. Don't wait until it's too late. Contact Peak Performance Roofing today to schedule your free estimate. 416-8301. Peak Performance Roofing. Your roof is our priority. Hi, I need new tires. Perfect timing. Right now, during our tire savings event, when you buy three tires, you get the fourth for only a dollar. Wow, that's a great deal. Right? Can you imagine finding a tire for less? Sorry, honey. Mama needs a tire. No, definitely not. No. Let's get you those tires. Okay. Right now, during our tire savings event, buy three tires and get the fourth for only a dollar. Toyota Service Centers. Keep your Toyota a Toyota. Fox Wednesday will bewitch you first. Welcome to the Mad Singer Harry Potter night. Ravenclaw! Slytherin! Woo! Queen put a spell on all of us! Then... Woo! Snake Oil is the game show with treats. The Sick Buddy, for use when vomiting. Americans love toilet inventions. <laughs> Don't get tricked. This show's crazy. All new Snake Oil after an all new Mask Singer. Wednesday on Fox. Welcome back, everyone. There are countless stories to tell from the Beirut bombing, but some of those stories were left unfinished. That's where former U.S. Marine Lance Corporal Kevin Perry comes in. 
Our Doug Banks spoke to the Orenville resident who's living up to the Beirut Veterans of America's motto, their first duty is to remember. Just outside his front door, Kevin Perry has been walking across Route 16 since 2009 to his plot of old forested land where you'll find over 30 trails dedicated to members of the U.S. Marine Corps who served in Beirut. I'm not sure why I did it. There's a saying that um, a person dies twice. They die when they actually physically stop living and they die a second time when, when everybody, nobody talks about them again. On that Sunday morning in October of 1983, Perry was at the U.S. Embassy getting ready to start his day. And the Marine rushed in and said they just leveled the, the Marine Corps barracks or, or the headquarters company. And I said, was there a lot of people hurt? And he goes, no, it's leveled, it's on the ground. For the next three weeks, he served as an external guard for the embassy. Anybody's lucky to live up into adulthood or, or, or even get to be an older man like me. Today, he walks the trails he cleared himself, telling stories, some of which end too soon, and others he hopes continue writing. He was my company commander, and he was killed in the October 23rd bombing. Doc, he'd be preaching to us to quit smoking cigarettes. Sergeant Major Douglas was our highest enlisted rank in our battalion. Some of Perry's goals are for other Marines to share their own stories, like this one of a Machias native who was serving in Beirut as well on that day. He also survived. Perry also wants to increase support for veterans' organizations, helping to ensure that the service and sacrifice of all veterans is remembered and honored. They died before they should have, and they never had the chance to have kids and grandkids and, and live their life. And you know, those are the people that, to me, are important. In Ornville, Doug Banks, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Very meaningful project. What a great way to make sure people don't forget. I yeah. think that's the best yeah. way, you know, get outside, enjoy them, and enjoy, you know, yeah. me memorial memorializing yeah. them. Yeah. Whew, words are hard today. Speaking of outside, it's so beautiful. You see the video there with all the beautiful leaves? Yeah. Looks like we'll be seeing some brightening skies, so maybe it's a good chance to get out there and check them out. They're definitely peaking in some yeah. parts of the state. They're past peak. Um, yeah. A lot of them have fallen, especially with all that rain we got yesterday. Check it out now before they get all blown away. There's still so, time. Yeah. Yep. Now let's check in with Devin Viggs for that full forecast. Alrighty, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. Alrighty, here we go. A small crowd advisory is up until 11 a.m. this morning along the coast, so some gusty Wednesday will stir up things in the ocean for a bit before things start to calm down later on today, and especially later on tonight. There is a, there is a few spots dealing with some areas of dense fog from parts of Bay to Waterville to Augusta to name a few spots though so you might encounter some fog in a few spots this morning but nothing too widespread that we'll have to worry about. The clouds will start to get out of here later on today. The rain's starting to get out of here now so things will start to gradually improve as the day progresses on. Especially later on tonight we'll be under a mostly clear sky and that will allow some frost and freeze conditions to develop with high pressure not too far away in this system right here that continues to track off towards the east and now will start to leave us alone over time and high pressure passes through. The more activity off the west will start to approach our direction though and maybe a small chance for showers in the northern parts of the state so let's break this all down with future cast right here again some clouds and sunshine mixed today the rain gets out of here we'll be under a mostly clear sky later on tonight which will allow frost and freeze conditions to develop we have a lot of sunshine for the day on tuesday maybe a few passing clouds in a few spots and then by later on tuesday night into wednesday some more clouds look to move in and any rain chances will look to stay away for a while but we may have to watch for some chances in the northern parts of the state coming up later on but otherwise, so overall this week, this is what that all looks like. So there will be some rain chances, mainly in the northern parts of the state. Some of those may try to sneak farther south. But notice though, Caribou gets a lot of the rain. We'll have to three quarters of an inch of rain before we're all finished up between now and Sunday. So this is over the next seven days overall, though, maybe roughly give or take. But otherwise, though, again, winds will be up and down from time to time, too. Wind gusts reaching up to around 15 to 20 miles per hour at times throughout the daytime period today. Notice the backs off later on tonight, but it will start to pick up again 
again later on tomorrow with a few gusts reaching up to around 15 to 20 miles per hour at times. That forecast coming up for today, lower 50s, party cloudy and breezy out there. The north wind getting up to around 20 miles per hour. Later on side, lower 30s, mostly clear frost and freeze conditions on the way with the wind overall looking nice and calm. For tomorrow, upper 50s, lots of sunshine, warmer as well. With a southwest wind at around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Scott's Recreation extended forecast. A small chance for showers on Wednesday, mainly in the northern parts of the state with highs in the lower 60s. Tuesday night also has a small chance for a few showers in the northern parts of the state. Will then be party cloudy Thursday with highs in the low 70s. The upper 60s on Friday with a mostly cloudy sky. Silver Fox Automotive is a family owned and operated company with more than 30 years of experience. We are originally from the county and offer competitive prices and promise you will be completely satisfied with our work. We offer a stress-free experience to both our new and returning customers. We only use parts from reputable brands to ensure your vehicle is safe to drive. Here at Silver Fox, there will always be a friendly face to greet you. Come see us at 2004 Audlin Road in Herman. Are your gutters weighed down by debris causing them to sag and overflow? I'm Tony Hafford with TC Hafford Basement Systems. Clog gutters lead to costly repairs for your home, so skip the cleaning and stop the clogs with Gutter Shutter. Gutter Shutter, the world's best gutter, is a high-performance gutter with a lifetime no-clog guarantee. Stop the clutter, get Gutter Shutter. Call TC Hafford Basement Systems today for all things basementy. I'm 82 years old and I have collapsed arches, which means the first thing that hits the ground is the bone in my, my arch. I came to Comfort Shoes four years ago because I couldn't walk without pain. And she spent so much time on my feet getting the right shoe and we finally found the right pair. Once you made these orthotics for me, I have no pain. These are so comfortable. I have no discomfort. I feel like I could go running. And I thank you and Comfort Shoes for that. And all at once, our tales told that now the final act unfolded. Now to the ongoing war between Israel and Hamas. The Biden administration is asking Israel to delay their expected ground incursion into Gaza in order to allow more time for the release of hostages and to get critical aid into the region. All of this as Israel steps up its airstrikes in the region. ABC's Ike Jachi is in Washington with the latest. This morning, Israeli Defense Forces stepping up its attacks on terrorist targets, striking a refugee camp in Gaza, killing 40 Palestinians, including women and children, according to the Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry. Elsewhere, Israeli fighter jets striking a mosque in the West Bank, which Israel says thwarted an imminent terror attack. At least two people were killed. This drone video showing buildings pulverized. A Palestinian journalist says he scooped up these two wounded toddlers, rushing them to a hospital. ABC's Matt Gutman reports what happens next in Gaza will unfold in three stages. The first will comprise the most intense fighting. That's the invasion of the Gaza Strip. The second stage is cleanup operations, finding remaining Hamas cells and weaponry, destroying them. The third stage is rehabilitation, restoring essential services in Gaza, perhaps a government. The Biden administration urging Israel to delay a ground invasion in Gaza in order to allow time for the release of more hostages. Israel says Hamas is holding at least 212 hostages, including some Americans. I'm scared because, what, because, I, because what does that mean? I don't know where is my daughter. Nobody knows. On Friday, Hamas releasing a mother and daughter from the Chicago area. Judith and Natalie Ronan in a deal brokered by Qatar. Meanwhile, the humanitarian crisis inside Gaza is growing. People are running out of food, water, medicine, and fuel. 15 aid trucks arriving in Gaza over the weekend, slowly trickling in. Still, hundreds of additional trucks packed with critical aid waiting at Egypt's Rafah border. 
There are fears the conflict could widen. The U.S. now moving a second carrier strike group and missile defense system into the region. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Well, meanwhile, the drama continues on Capitol Hill as Republicans struggle to find a candidate who can get the 217 votes needed to become Speaker of the House. Republicans will be back at it again tonight, starting from square one, as they look to elect a new Speaker. Here's ABC's M. Wynn with the latest. The field of candidates vying to become the next Speaker of the House is growing larger. After three failed votes on the House floor, conservative Jim Jordan was forced out of the race by his GOP colleagues who voted to remove him as the nominee. This is probably one of the most embarrassing uh, things I've seen because if we don't have a Speaker of the House, we can't govern. At least nine Republicans are now vying for the position, including House Majority Whip Tom Emmer, Representatives Byron Donalds, Kevin Hearn, and Mike Johnson. Emmer is seen as the immediate frontrunner, but he's disliked by Donald Trump's congressional allies after he was one of 64 House Republicans who voted to uphold Biden's electoral votes in 2021. Former Speaker Kevin McCarthy telling NBC. We need someone who understands how to do this job. He sets himself head and shoulders above all those others who want to run. We need to get him a this week. Despite McCarthy's support, it's not clear if the Minnesota Republican can secure the 217 votes he needs. Former Speaker Newt Gingrich telling Fox News Republicans should go in a room and not come out until they have a candidate who can win. Stay there, a very simple test. Can you get 217 votes? They shouldn't bring anybody out until they have 217. Without a House Speaker, no legislation can be brought to the floor, including the $100 billion foreign aid package President Biden requested, which includes funding for Israel and Ukraine. Republicans will hold a forum Monday evening behind closed doors, where they will hear from each candidate before an internal secret ballot Tuesday morning to select a candidate. A vote on the floor could come Tuesday afternoon. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. A Chapel Hill service being held on Sunday in Detroit for a prominent Jewish leader. This as investigators search for a motive in her sudden death over the weekend. Fox News correspondent Matt Finn has the latest. Detroit police say they are mobilizing their own resources and turning to the public to find out who killed this beloved community leader. Samantha Wool was declared dead outside of her Detroit home on Saturday, found stabbed to death. Police say a trail of blood led to her house. The motive, unknown. The 40-year-old victim had led the Isaac Agri downtown synagogue since last year. She was a campaign staffer for Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel and a former aide to Democratic Representative Alyssa Slotkin. Representative Slotkin tweeting out she is heartbroken and writing about Wool, quote, in politics and in the Jewish community, she dedicated her short life to building understanding across faiths, bringing light in the face of darkness. And a fellow leader in the Jewish community is also mourning Wool's loss. A role of, you know, a president of, of a synagogue is really to inspire the community, to inspire the synagogue, to want to do better, to set the tone. Um, and that's what Sam did. Uh, you know, when, when I came in contact with her, um, you know, her her smile was so great that you couldn't um, help not to smile when you were in, in her presence. The Detroit police chief is urging the community not to draw any conclusions right now uh, as the motive and the death investigation is underway. Matt Finn, Fox News. In other news, vaping products are posing new community challenges. Communities across the country are struggling with how to safely get rid of disposable vaping products because they're considered hazardous materials. Single-use vaping products containing nicotine, lithium, and other metals can't be tossed into the trash, reused, or recycled. In New York City, some disposal companies can't get involved in removal because of regulations. So the destruction of vapes, when it comes to destroying it, it's classified as hazardous material. So an average barrel for us, which takes about 1,200 vapes, costs cost us about $1,400 $1, to destroy the product. It's a controlled uh, industry, so there are particular people who have licenses for destruction. Not everybody has those licenses in place. Um, we also have an additional process in, 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 in New York here about inspecting the instruction and verifying that the products have been destroyed. So that also eliminates certain companies who would normally be in the business. They don't want you inspecting their destruction process. Um, so that also limits where we can go. 
Recently, the Food and Drug Administration has started the process of trying to prevent imports of several disposable vaping brands. New York Sheriff Anthony Miranda says legislators likely never considered the large volume of illegal vapes. He says he'd like to see new laws that pass on disposable costs to illegal vendors. All right, coming up on the second half of the newscast, jack-o'-lanterns were aglow this weekend at the Anna Shriners in Bangor. We'll get a recap of the UCP of Maine's Pumpkins in the Park event. That and more as Good Morning Maine continues. In 10 years, Lisa Schneider will have an amazing second act. Thanks to career reskilling courses from AARP to help make sure her income lives as long as she does. The younger you are, the more you need AARP. Nothing brings people together like good food with the freshest ingredients. All natural Faye sour cream is so rich, so creamy, so good. Daringly simple, amazingly delicious. Discover Faye sour cream. Oversharing can be spiritual. Name someone you had a romantic dream about. My minister. Praise the Lord, Pastor. <laughs> It can be loving. You love to plant a big wet kiss on Steve Harvey's what? Lips. <laughs> Your lips ain't big enough for these lips. It can be wet. Name someone who has touched your bare body. The pool guy. Overshare with Family Feud. Weeknights at 7 on Fox 22. You're watching Fox 22, Bangor. Welcome back, everyone. Today is Monday, October 23rd, 2023. It's also National Horror Movie Day. Uh, I know what I'm doing today. I'm Good day for it. I'm glad it's kind of cloudy, so I yeah. won't feel bad about staying in later. With Halloween just days away, it's the perfect time for a good fright. Horror movies have been around since 1886, when a French filmmaker created a short film about a haunted castle. They've been a significant part of horror movie culture, or, or movie culture, with classics that continue to captivate audiences. I mean, the original Dracula, the original The Mummy, mm. The Invisible Man, those are all still, if you go back and watch them, they hold true. They're still fantastic films. They're entertaining. Yeah. Some of them are a little bit hokey right. with the makeup and stuff, but oh, they're, yeah. they're still great. No, yeah. I love it. I, okay, so there's there's real scary movies, and then mm -hmm. there's corny scary movies. Right. Yeah. I love both. Yeah, me too. If it's if the corny factor is done right. Do you, you like know? the funny scary movies, like scary movie? Yes, think, yeah. but I gravitate towards those a lot less. Yeah. Yep. Um, I'm actually watching the show What We Do in the Shadows, and that's mm -hmm. kind of, it's supposed to be spooky, but it's just, mm -hmm. it's so funny to yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. What's, we, I know we've talked about this the past couple hours, but just for midpoint's sake, what's your favorite horror movie? Oh, I like a lot of them. Yeah. Um, I think Salem's Lot is yeah. the number one one, just because it freaked me out when I was a kid watching it, but All things like favorite. Amityville Horror was another yeah. one that freaked me oh, out. Oh, that one's you know? terrifying. Yeah. That has actually been one of the movies that scared me more than anything. Yeah, and the book itself, oh my goodness, if you get that, it could be it's based on a true story too, yeah. whenever you throw that in there. Yeah, so. I've wanted to kind of drive through that neighborhood and yeah. see that house, but it's residential, yeah. so I, I won't bother the homeowners. I like the old ones too, um, old being like when I was in high school, I remember with all my friends growing up, we'd watch like Friday the 13th, and oh, the Halloween movies. and That's one of the best yeah, ever. I love that stuff. film. Yeah. yeah. Yep. yep. Cool. I think my favorite's probably The Fog. That's John yep. Carpenter, who also did the original Halloween. Yep. Um, and he also did The Thing. And Vampires and, yeah. and several others. So. Vampires are probably one of my favorite monsters yeah. in these things. We could go on and on. And though. on and on. Um, well, the top three horror movies of all time include The Exorcist, Halloween, and The Shining, which makes sense to me. Those are fantastic films. Yeah. On this day in history, back in 1910, Blanche Scott became the first woman to make a public solo airplane flight, reaching an altitude of 12 feet at a park in Indiana. Cool, before women could even vote. Good for her. Yeah. In 1973, President Richard Nixon agreed to turn over White House tape recordings that had been subpoenaed during the Watergate investigation. And in 1983, as we heard earlier, 241 U.S. service members were killed in a suicide truck bombing at Beirut International Airport in Lebanon. A simultaneous attack also killed more than 50 French soldiers on that day. Yeah, and it was kind of a, a non-active zone, but still, if it's yeah. in a military base, you never know. And it's still a volatile section of the world, and because of what's happening on the West Bank, we're hearing more from Beirut suddenly, and Lebanon, yeah. and those places. Who knows and what could go on there in the next few weeks, months, and years. Opening for the best. Yep, yep.
And in 2001, Apple announced the first iPod media player capable of storing up to 1,000 songs. Today's birthdays include actor Ryan Reynolds, he's 47 today, actress Amelia Clark is 37, and country singer and actor Dwight Yoakam is 67. We were listening to little Dwight Yoakam music earlier. Yeah, you got me onto it. Yeah. I like him. It's pretty good. That nice. twang is like the perfect type for country. Yeah. You might recognize some of his songs. You don't even realize who sung it, yeah. but he's been around for a long time. It's like dancing music. Yeah. Good stuff. Dancing in the kitchen. Yeah. All right. Time for your forecast. It looks like kind of uh, things will be brightening up a little bit today. Better than yesterday. Yeah. Here's Devin Biggs. And thank you very much, Craig and Emma. Happy Monday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home in Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices. With locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. We're going to get into things this morning. A small craft advisory is posted until 11 a.m. this morning. Along the coast, because some active winds have caused some active surf along the coast. We're going to work on getting this to back off, though, as the gusty winds will gradually start to back off over time. As for the fog, we have a few spots seeing some fog this morning near parts of the Waterville and Augusta area, maybe near parts of Bangor as well. So some areas of dense fog cannot be ruled out this morning. Nothing too extreme to get too worried about. Otherwise, though, the rain started to taper off. The clouds will start to break up gradually, too. We'll get some sunshine rolling for a little while during this afternoon period. Then later on tonight, a mostly clear sky will be the common idea. Last few hours, though, here's that area of low pressure right here that's moving away from us now. So that's some good news to report. We'll calm down this week. Well, we may have to watch for a small chance for a few showers coming up up in a few spots, especially in the northern parts of the state. So future cast for today, we'll see less clouds later on, especially later on tonight with a mostly clear sky, frost and freeze conditions expected later on tonight, especially in the parts of tomorrow morning. As for the winds, so roughly out of the north at around 5 to 10 miles per hour, some gusts up to 20 miles per hour are possible today for the wind start to back off later on tonight, but increasing for the daytime tomorrow. Hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period, a mixture of clouds and sunshine, temperatures in the 50s, your full final day forecast is coming up. Craig and Emma. So the clouds are moving out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be an okay day. Okay, well, trick-or-treating came a little early this year for those in the Bangor community as UCP of Maine's annual Pumpkins in the Park event returned. United Cerebral Palsy, also known as UCP of Maine, holds a family Halloween benefit each year to go towards the nonprofit's efforts to assist adults and children with physical, intellectual, and mental health needs. Around 20 businesses participated in the indoor trick-or-treating held at the Anna Shriners building in Bangor. Organizers say they look forward to this event each year. It's so great. This is our 21st year and uh, it's kind of become a Bangor tradition and uh, to see the community support us is such a great thing. According to Andrew Lohman with UCP of Maine, each year has a different theme and this year's theme was Hooked on Books. This is the organization's largest fundraiser. More information can be found on our website, foxbangor.com. So cool. Good theme, too. Yeah, they do a lot of neat things, too. You don't hear an awful lot about them, but they help a lot of people, um, adults and kids with disabilities. Yeah. I know one of their favorite things I, I used to like to watch was they put on a prom for all these people. And yeah. They gave them a night out and it was just, just a blast. That's awesome. Yeah, they do daycare services. I mean, I could go yeah. on and on. A lot of things that just make these people's lives better. Right. And thanks to the people that turned out this weekend, they'll have a yeah. little bit more money to do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, I feel like it was easy for folks to turn out too. I mean, it was yeah. a rainy weekend and it was a fun time. Yeah. Cool. Okay, still to come here this morning, we'll hear all the latest from Hollywood. Don't go away. Your favorite restaurants for half off. It's half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. Here's this week's featured deal. Great things are always cooking at the ground ground. New menu, new specials with an amazing variety of choices for every taste. Good times, great service, and amazing food. Only at your locally owned ground round. Odland Road, Bangor. On sale Thursday at 9 a.m. A limited supply available half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. Hood Milk and You. It's why we do what we do. Day in and day out. Making milk you can trust. With no artificial growth hormones. And we protect Hood Milk with our light block bottle. We care about our milk. Because we know how much you care about what you give your family. So you can feel good about Hood. You should Angie that. Angie what? Angie.
you that. It means connecting with skilled professionals for all your home projects, from repairs to renovations, so you can get the most out of your home. Get started today at Angie.com. Come bowl a few games here at Bangor Brewer Bowling Lanes. We're one of the only Candleton Bowling Alley Centers in Maine. Conveniently located in the heart of Brewer, you always have the opportunity to simply bowl for fun. However, you can also join a league. We have youth leagues, adult and senior leagues. Now don't forget, we also host birthday parties for under $100, and gift certificates are also available. Give us a call right away at 989-3798 to make reservations for your birthday party today. 25 words or less. Cereal bowl. Killer. Full of frightful fun. I love Lisa's response to cereal. Killer. Do not have breakfast with Lisa. Five days a week. Weekdays at 9 on Fox 22. Mom and Dad, you must be so proud. We're proud of all of our children. She has to say that. Weekdays at 6 on Fox 22. Well, now for the latest on what's happening in Hollywood. Here's ABC's Daria Albinger. Look what you made her do again. Taylor Swift topped the box office. Her Eras Tour concert film raked in $31 million in its second weekend in theaters. That's more than any other concert film in U.S. box office history. Why did you come here? In second place, Martin Scorsese's latest effort, Killers of the Flower Moon. It earned $23 million in its debut weekend. That's the best start for Scorsese since 2010's Shutter Island, which took in $41 million in its opening weekend. Way back in third place, The Exorcist, Believer, at $5.6 million. The stars came out again for SNL. Bad Bunny got a boost in his hosting debut with a cameo by Mick Jagger, who showed up in not one but two sketches, including a Devo's turn in a spoof on a telenovela. Actor Pedro Pascal brought back his protective mother character, and if that wasn't enough of a lift for Benito Antonio Martinez Ocasio, he was also the musical guest with an introduction by none other than Lady Gaga. It's called The Black Book, but it's pure streaming gold. Netflix's new thriller, which tackles the theme of justice in Nigeria, is a global hit. Hit it! And a very happy birthday to a very busy man. Actor, entrepreneur, and soccer team owner Ryan Reynolds turns 47 years old today. Daria Albinger, ABC News. I loved Deadpool. Yeah, me that too. It was a fun movie. Yeah. Okay, when we return, we'll, ha we'll hear about mortgage rates. So Ooh. kind of a crash and burn there. Yeah, great news. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back. What can your John Deere compact tractor do? Attachments for any job. Financing that's as easy as... Like getting a library card. Affordable. You're going to get this bigger tractor, and it's going to be less money. Dependable. Through the rain, through the snow, I'll work through it all. Comfortable. And I haven't any idea how we survive without it. Experience United and build a tractor package customized for you. Winter is coming. Make sure your roof is at peak performance with Peak Performance Roofing. With over 20 years of experience in the roofing industry, our professionals provide quality craftsmanship and expertise that you can rely on. We are fully insured and work closely with your insurance company to make the process seamless for you. Don't wait until it's too late. Contact Peak Performance Roofing today to schedule your free estimate. 416-8301. Peak Performance Roofing. Your roof is our priority. For the first time, the Maine Association of Broadcasters named a television station of the year for excellence. ABC7 and Fox 22 are honored to be the very first station awarded this achievement. Winterport Open Stage is excited to present But Why Bump Off Barnaby? This murderous comedy is sure to be a great way to celebrate the Halloween season. Go to Winterport Open Stage on Facebook or their website at winterportopenstage.net for showtimes and ticket information. Looking for your dream home? Contact a next homie today and see what's available right now. Sellers, get ready to get looped and get sold. 
With Next Home Experience, we have your buyers. Astronomical mortgage rates are making an already pricey housing market even more unaffordable for would be home buyers. I don't want to think about it, but all right, Fox's Christina Coleman has the story. If you're a millennial or Gen Z with dreams of owning a home in this market, you might have to keep dreaming. Daily 30-year mortgage rates push closer to 8% this week, their highest peak in more than two decades. That's a substantial price tag for buyers. A Fox business analyst found that an 8% rate on a 30-year loan could cost borrowers as much as $400,000 more compared to a 3% rate. That's not only pricing out would-be homeowners, it also means those who locked in lower rates aren't letting go of those properties. The majority of the people who have bought in the last couple years or they refinanced to 2.5%, 3% mortgages, they're not selling and they're not putting more homes on the market. Since late 2020, the average monthly mortgage payment on a new home has nearly doubled and the number of homes for sale is down a staggering 45% from what it was before the pandemic. I think average home buyers right now are facing an absolute crisis. We need more houses. That's the way we're going to drive down prices. That's the way we're going to allow home buyers, particularly first time home buyers, who are really facing the brunt of this problem. It's also forcing developers to get creative in finding new ways to incentivize buyers. Sometimes we're doing that with either price reductions or with buy downs, offering lender credits to buy down the rate. To make it more manageable. Experts predict it could be a while before those rates cool off. Reporting in Los Angeles, Christina Coleman, Fox News. Doctors are implementing existing robotics into a new procedure to detect and combat lung cancer at a faster rate. Fox News' Christian Kafton in San Francisco with the details. We go ahead and start the procedure by inserting the catheter in the endotracheal tube. Inside an operating room in Sutter CPMC's Van Ness campus, a medical team is using a pioneering new procedure to battle lung cancer. Patients don't usually see a doctor until the onset of symptoms, meaning the lung cancer has advanced. Which makes the five-year survival for these patients down to 10 to 20 percent versus when it's discovered at early stages, the five-year survival can be up to 95 or 97 percent. Using a set of artificial lungs, Dr. Hiba Ashmael walked us through the new technique using robotic bronchoscopy. Doctors can guide a scope deep into the branches of the patient's lungs to locate a suspicious mass. The device itself has been used here about 200 times, but now the team is using it in a revolutionary way called the assisted single anesthetic procedure. Doctors use the scope to locate any suspicious masses, but then take it a step further, taking a sample of that mass for biopsy, testing it, even treating the cancer, all in one four to five hour procedure instead of the usual process, which can take up to eight weeks. We'll go with the robotic bronchoscopy, navigate to that lesion, get a diagnosis within 10 to 15 minutes after we get the biopsy. If it's cancerous, then we will put a dye on there. And then while the patient is asleep, the surgeon will go ahead, make very small incisions in the chest and take that part out. Patients stay in the hospital for a day or two and then can go home. Doctors here say streamlining the diagnosis and treatment all in one procedure means more lives saved. So by condensing the time, you really try and minimize any chance of upstaging or, or um, advancement of the cancer between diagnosis and treatment. Well, this innovative technology is already saving lives at Sutter CPMC. Now next month is National Lung Cancer Awareness Month and the staff here at Sutter CPMC will be holding a screening, but they are encouraging anyone over the age of 50 and who's been a smoker to talk to their doctor about setting up their own screening. In San Francisco, Christian Kafton, KTVU, Fox 2 News. And before we wrap things up for the day, let's turn things back over to Devin for another check of that forecast. All righty, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. All righty, here we go. A small crowd advisory is up until 11 a.m. this morning along the coast, so some gusty Wednesday will stir up things in the ocean for a bit before things start to calm down later on today, and especially later on tonight. There is a, there is a few spots dealing with some areas of dense fog from parts of Bangor, 
Bangor to Waterville to Augusta to name a few spots though. So you might encounter some fog in a few spots this morning, but nothing too widespread that we'll have to worry about. The clouds will start to get out of here later on today. The rain's starting to get out of here now, so things will start to gradually improve as the day progresses on. Especially later on tonight, we'll be under a mostly clear sky, and that will allow some frost and freeze conditions to develop with high pressure not too far away. And the system right here that continues to track off towards the east, and now will start to leave us alone over time and high pressure passes through. The more activity off toward the west will start to approach our direction, though, and maybe a small chance for showers in the northern parts of the state. So let's break this all down with Futurecast right here. Again, some clouds and sunshine mixed today. The rain gets out of here. We'll be under a mostly clear sky later on tonight, which will allow frost and freeze conditions to develop. We have a lot of sunshine for the day on Tuesday, maybe a few passing clouds in a few spots. And then by later on Tuesday night into Wednesday, some more clouds look to move in. And any rain chances will look to stay away for a while, but we may have to watch for some chances in the northern parts of the state coming up later on. But otherwise, so overall this week, this is what that all looks like. So there will be some rain chances, mainly in the northern parts of the state. Some of those may try to sneak farther south, but notice though Caribou gets a lot of the rain. We'll up to three quarters of an inch of rain before we're all finished up between now and Sunday. So this is over the next seven days overall, though, maybe roughly give or take. But otherwise, though, again, winds will be up and down from time to time, too. Wind gusts reaching up to around 15 to 20 miles per hour at times throughout the daytime period today. Notice the backs off later on tonight, but it will start to pick up again later on tomorrow with a few gusts reaching up to around 15 to 20 miles per hour at times. That forecast coming up for today, lower 50s, party cloudy and breezy out there. That north wind getting up to around 20 miles per hour. Later on tonight, lower 30s, mostly clear frost and freeze conditions on the way with the wind overall looking nice and calm. For tomorrow, upper 50s, lots of sunshine, warmer as well. With a southwest wind at around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Scott's Recreation extended forecast. A small chance for showers on Wednesday, mainly in the northern parts of the state with highs in the lower 60s. Tuesday night also has a small chance for a few showers in the northern parts of the state. We'll then be party cloudy Thursday with highs in the low 70s. The upper 60s on Friday with a mostly cloudy sky. It's your journey. Own every mile in the Hyundai Tucson with America's best warranty. Lease an all-wheel drive Tucson for $249 a month or get 0% APR plus zero payments for 90 days. Hurry in. Hammond Lumber Company has been a trusted partner of professional contractors, do-it-yourselfers, and homeowners for generations. It's the level of trust that Hammond Lumber has earned by providing an extensive selection of products and materials from industry-leading suppliers with guidance and support through every stage of any project, including delivery of materials throughout Maine and New Hampshire. Hammond Lumber Company is, has been, and will always be your building project partner. Silver Fox Automotive is a family-owned and operated company with more than 30 years of experience. We are originally from the county and offer competitive prices and promise you will be completely satisfied with our work. We offer a stress-free experience to both our new and returning customers. We only use parts from reputable brands to ensure your vehicle is safe to drive. Here at Silver Fox, there will always be a friendly face to greet you. Come see us at 2004 Audlin Road in Herman. There's a reason why Maine State's slogan is the way life should be. It's because our beautiful state is full of humble people, workers, business owners, and neighbors making a difference in their community. I'm always looking for positive and encouraging news stories about ordinary people doing extraordinary things. How fortunate am I that I get to share these special stories? Watch the good news weekdays on Fox 22 News at 10. Excuse me. Are you okay? Dry spot there. Okay. All right. The Oakland Zoo in California is celebrating a new addition to the giraffe herd. Mother giraffe Kijiji gave birth to her first calf, Kendi, last Thursday morning. According to the zoo, Kendi is approximately 150 pounds, six and a half feet tall. Kendi means loved one in Swahili, paying homage to the language spoken in Kenya, where reticulated giraffes can be found in the wild. By having giraffes at the zoo, they say they hope to bring appreciation and awareness to the giraffe species, including the challenges they face in the wild. The zoo said in a statement on X, formerly known 
as Twitter. Very cute little baby. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, the end of the work week just got even better. McDonald's is giving away free French fries every Friday for the rest of the year. But there is a catch. You just have to make an order of at least $1 on the McDonald's app and opt into its rewards program to get that deal. Kind of seems like they're trying to influence people to get the app. So that will work on me. Um, I will get it for this reason. I haven't broken down and gotten the app yet because I don't go there too often, but right. you can save some money by doing that. So. I get violent um, McDonald's french fries cravings. Do you? Violent. Yeah, yeah I, I do yeah. the same way sometimes. Sometimes you just need a little junk food. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Get you through, Treat so. yourself. Yeah. Okay, looks like we're about out of time. If you missed anything, head to foxbangor.com. Have a good one, everyone.